Oh my goodness, one year, one year. And you know what? This garden cost me less than $100. Let's talk about this because anybody can do it. And let's talk about what it costs. And I absolutely love the color. It brings a smile to my face and well, others who see it too. Hi, this is Robbie from Southern California. And you know, I had to step back and say, gee, this is so fun, this garden. Still working on it. How long has it been here? Two years? Three years? And then I look, no, video is up last year. This garden is one year old. Consists of all these totes. And if you calculate them at a regular price of what they sell for now, it'd be about $77, but it didn't cost me that much. I got a lot of totes for five. I got this green one right here at a thrift store for about a dollar. The chairs were free. I didn't pay anything for these chairs. These are the plastic chairs, see one in the back there, that people throw away. The old resin chairs, they start to give off paint. I've showed you, I've got videos. You get regular cheap old paint from like Home Depot, the tester paint, 50 cents, and you can paint two to three chairs with a little tiny canister, 50 cents. You wanna go out and get fancy colors, like I decided to paint some yellow and I wanted some red, they didn't have that. It was $4 for the container, because you can buy tester paint real cheap. It says indoor, outdoor house paint. It's non-toxic, and let me tell you something. If the chairs are in really bad shape and giving off paint, that's when it holds the paint the best. So that is fantastic. Nobody wants to sit on it, but once you paint it, you can sit on it. You can do what you want. I've got some of the chairs that have been in my garden now for over 10 years, painted. They weren't in the garden, though. I was using them for parties, and they're still going strong. So let's take a zip around here so you can see if you want to do something like this, too. Is this fun? Now, here's a couple totes on the ground. Eh, I've got a rabbit or something living under there. I leave them alone. And that's potato mint in there. And these are the tops I make out of the tote lids. I love that. So this way, the rabbit can't eat them. Nothing can touch them. And it keeps insects out, too. Potato mint doesn't need any pollinators, so I don't have to worry about it. That's my strawberries. Needs a little freshening up. And a little moringa tree here that's going to seed and stuff. Now, this is completely different. This is a two system. This is a larger size tote, again at the thrift store, two bucks, and then two buckets, and they're inside one another. This has got holes, and I put scraps from the garden, leaves and different things, even kitchen scraps in here. And on top here, I don't have anything planted, though I can plant. I'm just rooting some cuttings. I, I took this, it was a little cutting of a geranium, and I don't know why, I think it's the microbes and everything, but I have rooted a lot of plants this way by simply putting a little soil in there so earthworms can travel up and down and taking some small pots, putting cuttings in here, rooting them this way. I did a fig tree this way too. And then I can move them and plant this anywhere I want. It just, there's something in that environment that the plants love and makes them easy to root. And this thing has just taken off about 12 inches. That's a pepper. I bought some peppers from the grocery store pl and planted some seeds. So I've got a pepper in there. And this is red roselle. Look at this. Isn't that gorgeous? Two seeds I put in there. And anything coming out of there, because I'm composting in place in there, well, this is creating free compost tea for me. In other words, plant food, fertilizer. So I don't dare let that run out on the ground. I collect that and water my plants with it. Remember, holes in here. This has got one hole. This tube, this is the irrigation tubing. I'm using it for everything now, is going into the watering can. This has got holes going into the red bucket and the red bucket's got holes going into here so the earthworms can go back and forth. Haven't gotten to that wall yet, but I'm getting really, really close. Can you imagine this was a tiny nothing last year and boy, did we get a lot of figs off of it. I got some and so did the birds. And then I've got the rest of the totes. These are all 18 gallon totes here. Cause this one back here you looked at is more of, what is this one? 33 gallons, look at that. The thrift store had it and it still had a label on it. And yes, it is safe to grow food in them. They're usually a five, sometimes there are two and that's food grade. That's the same thing you're going to get when you go to the grocery store and buy food, including infant formula, anything comes in fives, it's all food grade. One, two, four, and five is perfectly safe for food grade. Don't worry about it. And it won't start to break down until it's over 150 degrees. And like I always say, if your garden's over 150 degrees because soil stays cooler than the air, then you got bigger problems than worrying about if your food is healthy. So it is fine. 
Now this is more potato mint. This wasn't meant to be in here, but a piece got in here, it took off. So I'll harvest that in the fall. And then here I let some of the water, see how my holes are? elongated so it doesn't block up. I'm just plant, planting different things in there. I've got a lot of geranium cuttings I'm doing. This is a poor tomato plant that's being eaten by the deer periodically and I had some hornworms in here. I've got a friend that flies by. I don't see him right now but there's a big red-shouldered hawk that comes through here and when he sees me working in the garden he comes and sits on the line and if I take a hornworm off and toss it he will come down and get it. He was here yesterday. So here, you can hang flags, by the way, to give a little bit of shade if you want. I've also got a squash plant, and I believe it's starting to throw squash again. Oh, yes, look at that. So that's pretty good. Now in here, I've got to get that squash off. This is another squash plant, and I've got some melons in here. These are Korean melons. I just planted them, so I hope it's not too late. Oh, look at this. More squash. And then I've got the pitcher. I love my pitcher. It's also, it's, a, it's like a two system that's got holes, but I don't have anything planted in it. You can set a pitcher up like that any way you want or any container. The reason I like pitchers is you just lift it, no effort, one hand, put your leaves in there and close it back and that's full of holes. Go watch the video. And it is feeding that tote with everything in it, the storage container. All that's getting like a plant food because earthworms will live in there, they love it. This is a cutting that came out of my bird garden. This is a very purple kale and I love it. And it's in the bucket. This is not a two system, but it is next to this. Mm -hmm. So it is getting plenty of food from that. And then again, more Korean melons I've got planted in here. These are my pepinos and I've got some red vein sorrel, which is really good to add to a green drink, stir fry, salad, and then my peppers. Isn't that beautiful? These are really super hot peppers. So I absolutely love those, but this is the pepinos here. These are my black cobras, by the way. They call them black cobras. You can eat them when they're green or black, but when they're ripe, they're red. And boy, can you save those. I'm saving them for the winter. We'll get into freezing soon too. Not this video, but very soon. And see, there's the pepinos. That's an interesting fruit, this. If you leave them till they're ripe, when they start to turn yellow, this one's probably, gives when they give a little bit, they're sweet. Otherwise, you use them like a tomato. You would slice them up and put them in a stir fry. But when they're ripe, you eat them raw and they're real, real sweet. This has been amazing. This has been unbelievable. This is my first time this has ever happened. This is watermelon. Got the videos on it. Three watermelon plants in there, two in there. This one had a two system. This one had the buckets that are larger. They're about two gallons. That one is just two flower pots put together, but that two system failed on me. Yep, that one did not. So I've got walking onions on the top because they don't pull that much. The reason I say this is exciting is look at the size of the watermelon. I'm gonna have watermelon pretty soon. When that turns brown, I'll have watermelon. There's another one there. There's another good size one there. And then there's a few small ones. I don't know if the small ones will make it. There's some on the bottom, but it's probably gonna end up having three watermelons. The reason I'm excited about this is those plants have already given me three watermelons. We've eaten them already. They are fantastic. This plant gave me two, but I'm not gonna get any more watermelon as of right now. I've got to get that pot out of there and I may be able to push it one more time. This was unplanned. The bucket in there that is a two system constantly feeding those plants gave the plants enough nutrition to set all new fruit, even though they were totally successful because I leave my watermelon on a week past when the curly cue the little tendril turns brown to make sure it's really sweet. I'm in no hurry. I want to make sure I have sweetness. And let me tell you something, every watermelon we've picked has been fantastic. So that's kind of a hint if you want to do it that way. So I need to get that out. And the reason is there is a squash that came up from inside the second pot, the one that's closest to the bottom. It came up from kitchen scraps. I didn't see it at first. I left it. So what I'm going to do is lift that pot up maybe within the week and take it out of the pot and plant it somewhere else. I'm not sure what kind of squash it is and get either some buckets in there or put a pitcher in there and then refeed the two plants that are in there in hopes that the two plants that are still alive will give the plant a signal that there's enough food, enough nutrients. Let's get this thing going and produce some more seed. That's what it's trying to do. So we'll see if that works. But right now that one worked perfect because the two system was set up perfect. 
the onions, the walking onions, anything small on the top, a small herb, it doesn't pull that much. So all the nutrients go through, earthworms stay on the bottom of the green bucket and it feeds the system. With that one, the squash underneath, it pulled everything. So it didn't give enough of the nutrients to the watermelon. Then I've got some garlic chives here. Then I've got here, I've got a cucumber growing here that I planted a type of cucumber. I don't remember exactly which one. This is a little tiny piece of black turmeric I put in here. Just because it broke off. It was so tiny. I didn't think it was going to grow and it did. I've got different varieties of tomatoes coming across in here. I've got a hybrid midnight snack. You can see it in there. It's a blacker variety. See, they're black and then they start to turn red. And this is just some tomatoes that grew here. And they're doing fantastic. I'm going to get those all off and get a lot of them frozen. Same thing here, just some more tomatoes growing in here. And there is some potato mint. I didn't plant it again, it came up. And this is where I start my seeds. I've got squash and stuff growing here. I don't even know where I'm going to plant it. And that's been the rainbow garden. And of course, the pizza garden, which I did not have to do anything to this year. Everything rejuvenated on its own. And this too. These are sweet peppers and they're fantastic. I love these. So I'm going to get these off real soon. I already did. I took them off and I froze them. And as soon as I got them all off, it just went back to flower. If you leave peppers on a lot of your pepper plants, what will happen is they won't flower or they won't produce as well because it thinks it's done its job. So what I have to do is get the red ones off right away. I'm going to wash them and I'm going to get them all frozen. This is thyme. This is rosemary back there in a pot. See, I don't know if you can see it, but the rosemary is a cutting and that's in a pot. I've got another tomato, more of a midnight snack tomato. And then I've got the purple basil. This might be a hybrid because it's not that purple. They came up, you know, they come up from seed. So it's probably a hybrid. See how it's purple and green? Sometimes they're really intense. This is tricolored sage. This is a cutting of mine, and that's regular sage down there. Then I've got some more onions down there. And that's it. It has been fantastic. I'm very excited. I can't wait to get this done. It'll be another wall of buckets. Kind of thinking of how I want to set it up. And that's it. This is like one of the easiest gardens you can set up. Really, and it takes literally me maybe less than two minutes to water it. If you're doing it by a, with a hose, you just go through and you water. And you don't have to worry about anything underneath because whatever slowly drips through will go to anything you've got growing on the ground so you don't have to waste the water. You could always catch it and rewater if you wanted to, but whatever way works for you. And that's it. I thought I would just kind of show you how in one year we have produced so much food out of here and they're so cheap. And these containers hopefully will go on, well, they could go on for another two or three years, maybe even longer. Keep an eye on them. Make sure even in the winter, if I'm not growing something in there, they're hit with water. So as long as there's some sort of soil in there, it doesn't have to be on the top. See, I don't fill to the top, but this soil is damp and it keeps the plastic damp. So that's an update on my rainbow garden. And when I don't have a cluttered up table, I can work there and then we got a gazebo this year. We had it real cheap on sale. I think it was a hundred bucks and Gary put it together. And you know, it's been really nice to sit under. It's given my seedlings act actually a little bit of shade. And this real quick are some butterflies. Swallowtail butterflies were waiting to come out of their cocoons and we'll, we'll let them go when they come out. But this has just been so fun. It's my happy place. And I thought I want to share it with you today. Cause if I share it with you tomorrow, there might be things gone because I think I'm going to strip all these tomatoes off and keep those for the winter. With that, have a wonderful day. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye. Okay, that is super cool. Two crops on the same small plant. Wow.